I get to choose to find the moments of growth and expansion. I choose to open myself to deep heart opening love. And I choose pleasure when it feels accessible and necessary. And I remember that it is my journey. It is my soul journey. And I find solace in that. And I invite you to explore what is pleasurable motherhood to me? Because I can sit here and I can give you all of my insight and my experience as someone who has studied embodiment and pleasure for the past almost six years. And you can hear me talk about my experience, but if you haven't fully experienced it yourself or even began to define what motherhood is for you or even define what pleasure is for you, a lot of what I'm saying is going to go in one ear and out the other, and it's not going to land in a meaningful way that could really transform your experience of mothering or parenting and have like this almost revolutionary experience or moment for you, which is like why I'm doing this, because I deeply, deeply believe that pleasure is not only our birthright, but it is a path to deep healing, deep self-acceptance, to revolution, to liberation, to freedom. Because pleasure is of you, it's of me, it is of us, it is a human right, it is a human necessity. We need pleasure to not thrive. We actually need pleasure to survive. I'm your host, Justine Oxoy, and this is the Pleasurehood Podcast, a podcast where we explore what it means to be a mother, a leader, an all around badass from a place of pleasure, empowerment, and turn on. I am here to revolutionize how humans experience sex, pleasure, and motherhood by normalizing self care, normalizing having desires and normalizing mothers as sensual and sexual beings. Quick side note, you don't have to be a mother in order to listen to this podcast. Though I create my work with mothers in mind, this conversation is for everyone. I truly believe that pleasure is one of many paths of healing, and I'm here to highlight how to walk that path, no matter who you are. It is my deepest desire that wherever you find yourself on this amazing journey we call life, you can experience your power, your turn on, and of course, orgasmic pleasure. Welcome to episode five of the Pleasurehood Podcast. In this episode, I explore themes that you have heard me speak about over and over and over again, but I feel it's important to have these conversations over and over again, because when we hear the same or similar message several times, we hear it differently every single time. Because when we hear it again, In that moment, we are different people from the last time we heard that message. It lands differently. And it can be a much more potent message than it was before. And I find that you will receive exactly what you need from that message every day single time. So today I am going to share with you why I believe that pleasure is the foundation of everything. In this episode, I'm going to challenge you to define motherhood, parenthood, and pleasure 
for yourself. What does it mean to show up in your full self-expression as a mother? And what is possible when you are the prime example to your children of what is possible when you put your needs, wants, and desires first? Cultivating a pleasurable motherhood is something that takes time and intention. It is not impossible whatsoever believe you me. And I want to be clear, deciding that you want your mothering, your parenting experience to be pleasurable doesn't mean like it's going to happen overnight. It means that you decided to start doing the work to make it so. It also doesn't mean that you're not going to have moments of difficulty, frustration, anger, sadness. It means that you get to bring your whole self to your parenting and mothering experience and you get to be fully self-expressed in this in this experience that you're having as a mother or a parent. I want to be clear that these views are all my own. I don't expect you to agree with me, but I feel it is important to have these conversations because pleasure is truly the foundation of everything. And I will argue that until I am blue in the face. And I really, truly believe that it can change your life. And the only question that is left is, How are you going to allow it to transform yours? So let's talk about pleasure and motherhood. I know it sounds like an oxymoron, but what if there was a way for the two to become synonymous? The messages we receive about motherhood and parenthood paint a not so pleasurable picture. We're told that you'll have to put your whole life on hold to take care of the baby. You'll never get your sex drive back. You'll forever be disconnected or even hate your body. You'll lose yourself to motherhood. You'll most likely never have time for intimate moments with your partner. You'll have to hide that you've had a baby if you want a job, a promotion, or any other opportunity worth having. And the list goes on and on. And though sometimes these beliefs are true, like these stories are true and we do experience them, it's not the end-all be-all experience of motherhood or parenthood. I really do believe that if we don't take the time to understand or navigate like how these stories or beliefs are showing up and how we parent or mother, that these stories can very much hold us hostage and taint our entire experience of what it means to be a mother or a parent. Now, don't get me wrong. Cultivating pleasure and motherhood isn't a cakewalk. It is something that takes time, intention, attention, but it isn't impossible. Believe me, I question this possibility, especially now that my son is two. I have days where he really tests me. And I know that he's just practicing his will and testing it out and seeing what he can get away with and what he can't get away with. But in those moments when he's having a tantrum, (laughs) motherhood can seem all but pleasurable. But then there are those windows of time where all seems right with the world. And I can really feel gratitude pulsing through my veins. And I can feel the love surging through my body. And I can feel a pearl of deep bodily wisdom passed down to me from my ancestors. And I can feel the wonder and awe of life. And I can't help but think, 
wow, I created this little being. Like I co-created life with someone that I deeply, deeply love. And it's in these moments, pleasure seems possible. And there's space that's created for expansion. And I see all the possibilities that lie before me, my son, and my family as a whole. And in those moments, I forget everything I was ever told about motherhood. And it's in these moments that I realize that I get to choose to define motherhood for myself. I get to choose to find the moments of growth and expansion. I choose to open myself to deep heart opening love. And I choose pleasure when it feels accessible and necessary. And I remember that it is my journey. It is my soul journey. And I find solace in that. And I invite you to explore what is pleasurable motherhood to me? Because I can sit here and I can give you all of my insight and my experience as someone who has studied embodiment and pleasure for the past almost six years. And you can hear me talk about my experience, but if you haven't fully experienced it yourself or even began to define what motherhood is for you or even define what pleasure is for you, a lot of what I'm saying is going to go in one ear and out the other, and it's not going to land in a meaningful way that could really transform your experience of mothering or parenting. And have like this almost revolutionary experience or moment for you, which is like why I'm doing this, because I deeply, deeply believe that pleasure is not only our birthright, but it is a path to deep healing, deep self-acceptance, to revolution, to liberation, to freedom. Because pleasure is of you, it's of me, it is of us, it is a human right, it is a human necessity. We need pleasure to not thrive. We actually need pleasure to survive. Pleasure is part of our instincts. It allows us to navigate the world it allows us to navigate towards things that feel good and away from things that don't feel so good. It brings us joy, which is essential to not only thriving, but surviving. Pleasure allows us to experience community and connection. So pleasure is a necessity. It's not like a nice to have. It's not a, you know, one day I'll get to pleasure. No, pleasure is something that we need to incorporate in our life every single fucking day. And honestly, like tapping into my pleasure allowed me to decide pretty early on after Arda was born that the stereotypical tropes that are associated with motherhood. And honestly, they're stereotypical because a lot of them are real because we, especially in the U.S., we do not provide mothers or parents, guardians, those who are caretakers, the support, the community that is needed when a child comes into your life. Like we need a sense of deep, deep community and we don't have that. And so it's so easy to, to fall into these actions of self-abandonment, self-sacrifice, self-neglect. And honestly, there was a level of privilege that I had in order for me to like even decide that I didn't want to experience those things, not to say I don't and I haven't and I didn't, 
But there was a level of community that I had where I was like, I felt safe and supported enough to be like, you know what? I'm not going to self-neglect myself. I'm not going to abandon myself. I'm not going to self-sacrifice myself. There was a level of awareness that was afforded to me because I had the village and the community that is needed when you have a child. And like, don't get me wrong. Don't get it twisted. Like I had moments where, yeah, I fell back into old patterns. I still do. I still put myself last. In fact, I was sharing with someone the other day that it took everything inside of me to book a day at the pool where I just wanted to hang out and read and do some research and just chill and not be in my house. And it took everything inside of me just to be like, okay, I'm going to go. I can't tell you how many times I almost canceled. So even for me, even though I understand the importance of pleasure, the importance of putting my needs and my wants and my desires first sometimes, I still fall into old patterns because my inner people pleaser wants to keep me safe. And it's really hard for her, for me not to allow her to run the whole damn show, to be completely honest. But in those moments, I have deep compassion for myself and just say like, you know what, I was conditioned to not put myself first. I was conditioned to put myself last. Society has conditioned me. Society had conditioned my mother and her mother and her mother. So this is like a generational conditioning where I just saw the woman in my life putting other people first. And so instead of like getting down on myself and being like, oh, I fell into like a bad habit, like I should know better. Like, nah, fuck that. Instead, I decide to be like, okay, I'm going to explore how self-devotion and self-pleasure can fill me up in this moment. And I'm going to explore by practicing self-devotion and practicing self-pleasure, how those things can allow me to run on a full tank and not just fumes. And sometimes I do it really well. And sometimes I run off of fumes because I'm a human. But what I found is that like breathing life into myself has allowed me to breathe life into others in a way that doesn't make me feel angry or resentful. But instead, like sometimes excited to give what I can when I can. And the agreement, the commitment that I have made between myself and I, is that I come first, period. Again, am I perfect at this? No, I don't need to be perfect. It's a practice. Practice means you get better and better as you put it into action and you actually do it. I think it's really important to have these conversations because I don't think that a mother or a parent's life comes to a standstill when they give birth. I personally believe it is an opportunity to expand and an invitation to step into more of who you desire to be. It is an opportunity for you to experience overabundance, an overabundance of love, connection, desire. And I know for some, it may feel like it's completely out of reach, like it's not even available or even a possibility. But I'm here to challenge that. I'm here to push you in that belief. I'm here to ask you to explore where can you ask for support? Who can you ask? Write a list. If you had a full day to yourself just to do you, what would you do? It doesn't have to be anything grand or fancy or lavish. It could be as simple as like, you know what? I would sleep because I'm tired. Or I would hang out in bed and watch Netflix or The Real Housewives, which I do sometimes. (laughs) 
how are you going to take care of yourself? And you can do it in really beautiful, small ways, like remembering to eat, hydrating, drinking water, enjoying the maybe five minutes of peace that you have in the morning to sip your coffee and your tea. Maybe it's having a moment to yourself on your lunch break. To me, pleasure is most delicious in the quiet moments, in the moments that we often just kind of like take for granted. So I challenge you to define motherhood, parenthood, pleasure for yourself. What does it mean to have an empowered mothering and parenting experience? What does it mean to show up in your full self-expression as a parent? What does it mean to be an example to your children of what is possible when you take care of your needs first? Fill your cup up first so you can be fully present with the ones in your life. You get to be the example. You get to do it differently. You get to show them what's possible and remind them that pleasure is truly, truly, truly the foundation of everything. Thank you for joining another episode of the Pleasurehood Podcast. I hope you enjoyed listening to my musings on pleasure. I could literally talk about it all day long, but I mean, then again, I guess I do. <laughs> Be sure to tune in next week with my special guest, Vanhale Makwakwa. Vanhale and I go deep into the mother wound and discuss how the mother wound can affect our ability to practice self-love, and acceptance. We also discuss how children become loyal to our behavior and the importance of healing ancestral trauma. It is a powerful, powerful conversation, y'all. So be sure to join me next week. Also, if you're new to the Pleasurehood podcast, first of all, welcome. And if you liked what you heard and you want to connect with me more, you can listen to past episodes Follow me on Instagram at Justine Oxoy and also drop into my YouTube channel aptly named Wild Sexy Free. If you're an Apple podcast user, you can support the podcast by leaving a review there. I would really, really appreciate it if you did. All right, beauties. That's all I have for you today. I'm sending you so much love, pleasure and sexy vibes your way. And until next time, Stay wild, sexy, and free.